For the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. When the priest begins to pray what's called the institution narrative, which is when we pray and we start to bless the bread and wine so that it be can become the blessed body and the pure blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, it begins with a beautiful saying. It says the Lord was determined to give himself up to death for the life of the world. And when he took bread and he broke it and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples and apostles. And then he took the cup. It was mixed in our tradition with wine and water. And he blessed it and gave them to drink. And he said, take eat of it and take drink of it. And do this in remembrance of me. We, our understanding of the word remembrance is very limited. It's something that we hear and we remember. So if you meet someone and you hear their name and you remember it, or you watch a movie and you remember it, and you can play little bits about it back in your mind later. But the remembrance that the Lord was speaking of in Greek, the word is amnesis, which means not so much to remember, but to relive, to do it again, to feel that you're doing it all over again with the same characters, the same people, the same person. So imagine if, you, if there was a great war and you watch a movie about the great war later, you won't see the same characters that were in the original great war. Maybe if the movie was recently after the war had ended, you could maybe place a couple of the figures back into the movie, but they would be changed. They would be different. They would be older. And maybe some of them would be dead so that you would have to replace someone in their stead. But our Lord is different. He is, we call him unchangeable. And we call him immortal. He never dies. So when we practice the sacrament today and every Sunday and every time we practice and take of the Eucharist, it's the Lord himself that's reinstituting this practice. It's not so much that we remember it and we say, we're going to do this so that we can remember that it was done before, but we're actually partaking of it. I like to think sometimes during the liturgy that I'm sitting in that room in the Passover and imagining the disciples seeing the Lord for the first time breaking the body and taking of the blood and blessing it and giving it to them and fill, filling them with himself. When we take of the body and the blood, we don't just take of an imaginary body and a, or bread and wine or something that's supposed to be symbolic of it. We actually take the body and blood of Christ and when the priest gives you the body, it's not so much that the priest himself is giving you the body, but Christ himself is giving you of his body. And Christ himself is giving you of his blood. Remember, the remembrance is not just something that we, that we look before and then we remember it again, but it's actually we're reliving it. We're reliving it. So today, when you take of the body and the blood, we're reliving it, the same as in the upper room. The Lord himself is giving you of his body and his blood. For this reason, we have to be very careful so that we don't let ourselves fall and not allow ourselves to partake of this as often as we can. What a great blessing that we have. If someone told you that the Lord was here and he was giving of his body and his blood, you would run to him immediately. There would be nothing that would stop you. But oftentimes we find reasons not to come whether it's for simple reasons like laziness or tiredness or sickness, or more difficult reasons if there's someone that you haven't been able to forgive, or if there's something or a sin that you're not able to overcome, and you find yourself feeling like, I'm not worthy to come and partake of this body and this blood. If the Lord himself was here, what would stop you from coming? If the Lord himself said, you must forgive and then you can meet me, you would run and forgive. You wouldn't wait. If the Lord said, stop this sin and you can come and take from me, you wouldn't wait. You would run right away. Stop the sin and come and take from his body and his blood. Our problem is that we think of the body and the blood that we receive as something that happened in the past and a reenactment in the future. But it's real, it's true, it's the same. The same hand is giving you of his body and his blood. 
And if you really believe that, and you know that, then there is nothing that will stop you from coming and taking of the body and the blood. If there is something that's stopping you, then you would immediately get rid of it so that you can partake. So let's practice this from now on. Don't let anything stop you from partaking of the body and the blood of Christ. It's true. It's real. It's special. It's the Lord himself giving it to you. How often do we think, wow, I imagine if I could just see the Lord Christ. You do. You see him. You can see him. You can partake of him. Not only do you see him, but he knows you by name and gives you, you individually, his body and his blood. I also would like to take a moment right now to remember those who might be sick or who might be unable or who might have lapsed in the faith that are not here with us to partake at the Lord's table with us today. It is our responsibility to pray for those people, the ones who can't come because of sickness, because of prior obligations, or because of their unbelief. We must pray for them so that we can share with them this great mystery and this great gift that we take and receive. We have an abundance of riches because this is not the only time that you'll partake of the body and the blood. On Saturday morning, you also can partake of the body and the blood. On Sunday morning, you'll also partake of the body and the blood. On Wednesday, on Friday, on Saturday, on Sunday, we have the opportunity all the time. Let us pray together in earnest all of those who aren't able to be here today and in the future, let's pray for them so that the Lord encourages them and brings them back so that they can partake of the table. We are one body and one spirit. We can't forget that. And so if you're taking of the body and the blood and you're not worthy, then make yourself worthy. And if you're taking of the body and the blood and you're not praying for those that are unable or unwilling to take, then you're also unworthy. So please, raise up your hearts today in prayer in earnest for those that are unwilling or unable to come and take of the body and the blood, let's pray for them so that the Lord may accumulate us all together on one table and become one body and one spirit. And glory be to God forever. Amen.